So for the next few moments, what I'd like to do is bring you a gift out of God's Word, an encouragement, a truth that I believe changes our lives continuously when we come into the presence of our Lord and allow Him to be glorified in our lives. You know, so if you will, for the moment, let me just help us slow down for a moment and, and enjoy God's presence and the power of His Word. Last week, we, uh, we brought into uh, my message uh, one of my favorite characters of growing up in, in Christmas time. And I, I remember the generation that grew up with the Peanuts Christmas special, somebody, right, Charlie Brown? And, and Linus nails it every time in Luke chapter 2. And we had Linus last week, and uh, he, he reminded us of the Christmas story. We're going to look at it again today in Luke chapter 2. But in that story, when the angels were proclaiming what was happening in the birth of Christ, he, we were reminded there is a promise of peace that we can find on this earth when we walk in God's favor. It's not necessarily a peace on earth. We'd all love that. We'd all love all strife to cease and all wars and all that. But, but he promises to us as individuals there is a peace that we discover. But it's when we walk in a certain way. And if you remember, for those who were here last week, it's when we receive God's pardon. When we, we recognize that God did for us something we can't do and, and that we don't deserve. He forgave us of our sin. And he gave us a, a free and new life through Jesus Christ. We recognize that peace comes in God's presence. And we're to run to God's presence. Honestly, the greatest gift we can offer today, that any church can offer today, is that we'd be in God's presence together. Because the word says in his presence there is fullness of joy. Church is not, not just about a song, song, joy to the world. There is a fullness of joy when we're in God's presence. But there's also peace that's found when we respect God's principles. We, we know the truth. The truth will set us free. That's what the Bible teaches. And it's not just a truth. It is his truth. We know Jesus, and he sets us free. And finally, that peace comes from relying on his provision. But today, I want to bring another character from my childhood in. And we use him a little bit back around Thanksgiving, and that is the author of The Grinch That Stole Christmas, Dr. Seuss. And Dr. Seuss, I, I read something uh, back there at Thanksgiving, a statement he made that I think applies to this Christmas moment for us. And it says this, it'll be on the screen, that sometimes you don't know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Sometimes you don't know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. My prayer for you today, as we've been praying all week, is this, let this be a moment that shapes your life. In, in, the, in the New Testament, if we understand how the Bible is put together, it was written in the language, it was in the Greek language, and, and, and they were, they, it was very different than our English. They had multiple ways of expressing words, but there was a, a, there was a word for time. One is chronos, which is, y'all are like, it's 11 o'clock, Pastor, get going, right? That's time. But there was another one that was called moments. It was kairos. And what it speaks to is a moment in time where everything changes, a moment you've been set up to experience, a moment where everything hinges on that moment. And I pray this Christmas Eve, guys, this is not just a, hey, we did the Christmas Eve service, let's go eat, open presents, go, but may this be a moment that God changes your and my life forever. Can we agree to that this morning? Awesome. Let's read this story. Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 8, it says, And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that, that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a, with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they, were made, they, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen and had been told to them. Father, God, in this moment, Lord, as we praise the mighty name of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, the one who came to save us from our sin, Lord, we, we want to take this moment, God, and open our lives to you. And Father, I pray, God, even as we took that breath a moment ago, God, we would just breathe in, God, of your presence, of your truth, Lord. And God, let our souls come alive today, God, because of who you are and what you've done for us. Bless each one in the hearing of this word today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
We read the Christmas story, and it's, it seems like it's just filled with so much activity, right? There are angels proclaiming. There are shepherds traveling. Not only shepherds traveling, but, but when they see and they know this is the promise uh, that we had heard of, they went out and told everybody. They had to spread the good news that, that a Savior is born, one who for centuries had been proclaimed was going to take place specifically in this moment, but yet they were the ones that God chose to be there to witness it. Amazing. But in the middle of that chaos, in the middle of all the trappings of Christmas, this is my, it's my prayer for you and all that we're about to do in the next few days, there is a moment where we see a small little verse that I think we need to get a hold of today. And it said it in verse 19. It says, but Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. Sometimes you don't know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. What did she treasure? What did she ponder? I'd love to be able to stand here today and say, oh, all the theologians agree, this is what she did, but we really don't know. But just in the reading of the story, there are some things that stand out that I think really speak to us on this Christmas, where we need to allow ourselves to treasure, allow ourselves to ponder, and see what God does through that. I'm pretty certain that Mary, there were a few things that Mary pondered. I think the first thing is that she pondered God's promises from the past. You may not realize this, but God made promises for every one of us in the past that are fulfilled through Jesus Christ. We're celebrating today what had been prophesied for centuries before it ever took place, where the Jesus Christ came as the Messiah, the anointed one, to save us from our sin. I mean, Mary is in this moment, in, this, uh, in the story of Jesus' birth, and we, we recognize that, that she's there in this po- place where she's just given birth to this, this son, not in the best settings, but in the chaos. I mean, come on, ladies, riding a donkey, nine months pregnant to go pay taxes. Not the best way to have a baby, Right? But here she is giving birth to a baby in a barn next to farm animals with no epidural and no pain meds. Oh, God, right? But I can say this, and it's scary for me to say it, but few things are more memorable than giving birth. Now, I, I have not done so, obviously, but I've been there three times. I would even say I assisted three times. But I learned some things, and men, if, you, if you're not experienced this yet, I'm going to help you out this morning. I learned some things when you're in the presence of someone giving birth. Number one is try not to say something you'll later regret. Bad move on my part. I grew up the son of a veterinarian. We pulled calves. I mean, you know, come on. It was just life. First born, I'm like, man, doc, this is cool. My wife's fingernails found my arm very quickly. There was nothing cool about that moment. Second thing I learned, if she reaches for your hand, give her the whole hand. Because if she gets your fingers, you might get some broken that day. Because it is a moment you will never forget. But Mary is this new mom, and things have finally slowed down, and she begins to ponder what's taking place. And personally, i got to think, she's thinking, I'm glad those shepherds are gone because they stink. But holding the baby Jesus, I wonder if she began to ponder the promises she'd been taught as a child. I wonder if somewhere in there the dots began to connect of things her parents had told her that were prophesied years ago that in Bethlehem a Messiah would be born. She grew up the daughter in a strong Jewish family, and and the promises made to Abraham were coming alive in this moment. And I wonder if she thought just for a moment, wait a second, we're fulfilling a prophecy that the prophet Micah made some 700 years ago. You'll see it on the screen. Read this. It said, but you, O Bethlehem, Epaphrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be the ruler of Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient of days in Bethlehem. This place known as the house of bread would come the bread of life. In Bethlehem, where today they've canceled Christmas because there is no peace on earth in this moment. But in Bethlehem, the Prince of Peace was going to show up and show us how to walk in peace when our our lives are found in him. And I wonder if she was remembering this and, and walking back through what had taken place. And I'm sure she was reliving the frustration the moment when Joseph, her, her, her husband-to-be, came to her and said, we've got to go, uh, we've got to go pay taxes. We've got we've to go because Caesar's declared it. We have to go to Bethlehem. There's a census being taken. And I'm guessing Mary's first thought was not, let's go. It was probably no way. <laughs> There's no way I'm doing this nine months, 100-mile journey, 10-day trip, unpaved roads, no Chick-fil-A, no Cracker Barrel, not even a Waffle House, people. It was dangerous. It was winter. It was cold. But in her pondering, did it dawn on her, God made a promise a long time ago that's being fulfilled in my life this moment. God made a promise a long time ago that I'm experiencing now. 
You may not know this, but in the Law and the Prophets, so the, the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, the Torah, what our Jewish friends would all would say, that is where their faith is found. There's over 300 promises that were made of the birth of Jesus Christ. I mean specific, where he's going to be born, how he's going to be born, who's going to be there, what's going to take place, like even all the way to his death on the cross and the resurrection. And every one of them was fulfilled in this moment because as she held this baby boy, the promise of God was being made known right in the moment. In fact, in Isaiah 7, 14, even as they prepared to name him, the, the word would come back where the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She'll give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means what? Help me out here. God with us. God is with us. Oh, if I could get you to know that this morning, God is with you. God is for you. God is not against you. We, we live in a world where so many have been caught other things where it seems like God is this ticked off deity and he sent his son to kind of save these wretches. No, he gladly, for the joy set before him, the word says, Jesus went to the cross for us. Why? Because of his great love for you and I. So she's holding Emmanuel, God with us. And she's got to realize in this moment that God had been with her every step of the way. And for us today, as we come into this Christmas day, we need to stop and ponder, where, do we really recognize God with us? Do we really honor that fact? Because he's always been with you. Oh, I'm talking to some today that you're, you're, you're on the rebound. You're like, well, I used to follow God. Can I tell you, God's always been with you. There's no use to in your life when it comes to God. He knew you before it was you were formed in your mother's womb, the word says, Psalm 139. He has days planned for you. In fact, if your kids are sitting around you this morning, you may be making great plans for them. But can I tell you, God has better plans. God has good plans. And, and it allow, allow you as parents to see them grow up in the promises of God. But the first thing we have to do is slow down and ponder and look at God's promises from the past and realize that they will come to pass. And even if we're waiting, maybe God has spoken a promise over your family, over your, your life. If you're waiting on that promise, can I tell you, God never forgets. God never forgets. And in the waiting, rest in the fact he is with you. So slow down and ponder his promises. I think the second thing Mary pondered it had to be God's peace for the present. Not just something from the past, but in the moments. We have a hard time being in the moment, don't we? I know when my kids are growing up, there's a, there's a challenge where you keep looking forward to the next stage. If we ever get them out of diapers, we can go out again. If we, if we ever get them into school, there can be a little normalcy in the house again. Then, then, they, then they grow. If we can ever get them past high school in those teenage years, then we can realize they're sane again. And then we, we kind of college and then marriage. And uh, now, my man, we're at the marriage stage. Now I'm, like, I'm already like, can we have grandkids, please? Someday, that would be nice. They just got married. No pressure, right? But you, you got to recognize there's a peace that God has for us to enjoy the moments, to be in the presence of what God is doing. I, I can imagine that moment Mary began to see things a little differently. I mean, think about how she looked at Joseph. He, he always gets ignored in the story, but I imagine she had to stop and go, who is this guy that God gave me? I mean, he believed her when one day they're just engaged, they're betrothed to be married, and she shows up and says, uh, Joseph, I'm pregnant. Oh, and by the way, it, it's, it's the Holy Spirit. Now, we're not going to raise hands this morning, but what guy in this room would not turn and walk the other direction, right? Like, yeah, not happening. But he stuck with her. Can you imagine that moment she looked at him and thought, what a man of faith. What a man of understanding. What a man who trusts God. I mean, her, her birth, the birth of Christ was absolutely miraculous. And I know a lot of people have a trouble in this season. They're like, oh, virgin birth, that's just, that's just crazy. But yet I know a lot of people have no problem believing that God split the Red Sea for the children of Israel to walk through to go into the promised land. No more miraculous than the virgin birth. The whole season is miraculous because we serve a miracle God. But Mary, as she pondered the moment, her reflection had to bring her peace because not only had God cared for them, but he had provided for them. Not only had God taken care of every moment, everything was set up for them, but he provided for them. Later on, she'll discover they're going to have to flee to Egypt because in the middle of all this chaos, Herod the king said, I want to kill every two-year-old boy and under out there because there's only one king. And they had to flee to Egypt. But what did God do? He sent three wise men who were bearing gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and, and he provided for them. Can I tell you, in your presence, God will provide for you. Some of you are in this place this morning, and you're already looking to this next year, and you're like, how's that going to happen? How's that going to work out? Maybe you're in a job change, maybe a big move, maybe a, something just changing around you. And, and as humans, what do we do? We stress because we want to know everything ahead of time. But I tell you, God goes before you and prepares the way when you put him first in your life. 
And God has a way of providing that you look back and say, how did that happen? But God did it because he loves us and he cares for us. So I've got to believe that Mary reflected on this moment and the chaos and the turmoil and the questions. I believe she experienced the supernatural peace of God because the baby she held in her arms and looked in the eyes of our Savior, Emmanuel, one day on the way to his cross to give his life for us, he would say this. He would say, peace I leave you. John 14, 27, peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. We all have a lot of reasons maybe we can get caught up in fear, don't we? Even as you're holding your kids, like, God, what's going to happen with these guys? Can I tell you, he loves them more than you do? You need to let that settle in you for a second. God loves them more than you do. He created them for the singular purpose that they would know his love. And they're seeing it now through you and through your lives. But we need to settle in that peace and say, God, no matter what happens ahead of us, God, you're there. Listen, Mary didn't choose the path. She submitted to God. I doubt she wanted the path. God, this is the way it's going to roll. But in her life, she was filled with God's promise of peace. And church, ours is too. Our lives may not be fitting in the category of miraculous as much as Mary's. But as I reflect, I can say this, looking back over 60 years, God's faithful. God's faithful, somebody. You don't always see it in the moment. You don't always have that overwhelming sense, our emotions of peace. But I will tell you, God is faithful. He'll never let us down. Oh, we'll go through a lot of hard things. I look back and I, I say he is faithful because he has shaped me in both my disappointments and my successes. He has been there both in my victories and my, my humil the humility, the humbling moments of my life. Why? Because God has been with me. He's bringing life to me. He's always been faithful. He's always been present. And I pray that's your story today. So Mary had to ponder the promise of the past. She had to ponder the peace, the presence. And, and I, I wish I could end this sermon here, and some of you are probably thinking the same thing, but there's one more thing that, that Mary did uh, have to ponder. That was God's power for the future. God's power for the future. Interesting part of the story of, of Jesus being born, we don't talk a lot about, is what happened after his birth. As good Jewish parents, they, they followed the, the law. They followed the, the Mosaic law, and they had him circumcised on the eighth day. But then they made their way up to Jerusalem because they had to present him or consecrate him in the temple. It's kind of what we do with baby dedication around here. It's where parents stand up and say, God, thank you for this gift, but they're really yours. And God, we're going to steward their lives, but Lord, we know they are yours. What a great blessing that is. But they brought him to the temple to, to be consecrated, and as they were at the temple, they met a prophet. His name was Simeon. And Simeon himself was waiting on a promise from God. In fact, years before, as he was in the temple offering up the, the, the praise and the prayers of God's people, the Holy Spirit revealed to him that he would not die until he saw this day. He would not die until he saw the Messiah, until he saw the Lord's Christ. And when they came to dedicate it, he knew that moment, this is who this is. And he took Jesus in his arms and began to praise God. And we read it in Luke 2, 29. He says, Lord... Now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people, Israel. What a moment. It's one of those mic drops, touchdown dance moments where you've been waiting something your whole life and it happens. And he proclaims the glory of God. He's shouting the praise in the moment. But then he turns to Mary and he speaks to her a word that honestly I don't believe any parent wants to hear. He says this in Luke chapter 2, verse 34. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and the rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. The Christmas song that's sung all the time, Mary, did you know? We don't know. But in this moment, she knew something. Not only was this birth a blessing, but what a great challenge. In a moment of great celebration, she hears this word spoken. She knows it's true. And now she recognizes this great blessing is also going to lead to her greatest breaking. And yet, because she knew God's promises of the past, because she knew God's peace in the moment, she could stand in confidence of God's power for the future. You see, church, one day she's going to stand by a cross and watch her son, the innocent one, hang on the cross for you and our sins. 
She's going to watch him suffer and die. And Mary, the one who had, had raised him up from the, from the holding in the arms, the swaddling cloths, to leading him through the teenage years into the adult. And when he, when he steps out and he says, oh, by the way, I'm God, even then she struggled with that. But now, when she stands beside the cross, her heart's broken. But yet there's a peace because her future is found in him. She knew what the word said in the old. She knew what had been promised, but she also knew what he said, that, oh, they may kill me, but on the third day, I'm going to rise. And she can stand with the confidence knowing that our God is faithful to his word. So often we stand in places where we look ahead and we're like, God, this is not the way we thought it was going to be. God, God, this is not the where I thought our family would be. This is not how we thought our marriage would be. This is not what we thought our, our, our job would be, but yet we have to recognize something. If we look back and say, God, you're faithful in the past, if we come in the present and say, God, your peace is real, then we can trust him for the future. I mean, how many things in your lives were, were moments that became memories? Things that at the time you're like, that's not the way I thought it would go. And now you have the privilege of hindsight and you look back and say, oh, God, look what you did. God, look what you were shaping. Like I said, I can look back over my life and say, God, you are faithful. God, you were faithful and our lives got turned upside down. You were faithful. God, you were faithful and everything went just perfect. You were faithful. And God, when I step looking into the future, I know this. God, you are a man that does not lie. You are a God that does not lie to us. Your promises, the word says, have been made yes and amen through Jesus. So she saw him rise from the grave when they found the empty tomb. She knew Jesus, the Lamb of God, had been slain for the forgiveness of our sins. And he wasn't there. Literally, death had been conquered. Hell had been conquered. The grave had been conquered. And now she stood with hope, the same hope you and I have today. Church, this is where we have to take Christmas personally. It's a hope, number one, that we can be justified with our God, that our sins can be forgiven, and we can be brought into right relationship with Him. Can I tell you this morning that God is not in love with a future version of you or a future version of your kids? God's in love with you. Your story may be messed up, jacked up, however you want to describe it. But God's in the middle of it with you. And justification just means that. When we look upon him and we put our faith in Christ, we're made right with God. In other words, he's not waiting for us to do anything. We can't prove our worth. We can't strive for it. All we can say is, God, I receive the gift. But there's a greater hope, and that is the adoption. The adoption is his sons and daughters. Oh, I think that's one of the greatest terms we can get today is you are a son or daughter of God when Christ is your Savior. And as parents, we know how we look towards ours. We take care of them. We are responsible. Our God is for us. He's responsible. He takes care of us. And my prayer this Christmas is that you recognize the things Mary pondered, that you recognize his peace, you recognize his promise. And you slow down and reflect for long enough to let this moment become a memory. Because if you're hurting this morning, can I tell you, Jesus came as your comforter. In fact, right now, I, I just believe this with all my heart. He sat down with some of you this morning. He just put his arm around you. He didn't ask you for anything. He won't. But he just speaks comfort. If you're afraid this morning, I can tell you he is a help in the time of trouble. And the Bible says we run to him. We don't stand and say, be strong, be brave, you can do it. No, we run to him because he's our help in time of trouble. For some today, you may come into the season weak, overwhelmed. I'm so thankful that when I'm weak, he is strong. Can somebody say yes to that? I'm so thankful his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. We don't serve a God that's, that's, that's like a human father that says, buck it up, let's go, come on, be strong, get over it. No, we serve a God that says, I understand. And I'm with you, and I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Some come into this season, and Christmas is a hard time because you've been rejected. But there's one who will never leave you. Some come and need a healer. But all of us need a Savior. And this Christmas season, guys, may this moment turn into a memory for you. May you sometime in these next few days stop and ponder and say, God, I want to thank you. God, you are faithful. Even if you're not feeling the peace in the moment, stop and say, God, you promised peace. God, let me recognize your presence. And maybe even those moments where you mark the calendar, you're already ready flipping into 2024, can you say, God, I know this. You've gone before me. God, you've prepared a way. And God, I trust you. 
So this morning on this Christmas Eve, I want to pray for you. And I want to ask God to turn this memory, turn this moment into a memory. Let today be a hinge point for your life. May you look back, God willing, someday and say, that day I settled it. That day I chose peace. That day I chose hope. That day I chose his future.